search on Paul Slater, there's a British uh, illustrator called Paul Slater. So I thought straight away the marketing tool, completely useless, if I have Paul Slater.net or whatever, it's going to be UK and gone, because half the people are going to find this other guy. Uh, and then a moment of, moment of uh, inspiration, you might call it that, or foolishness, or stupidity, no came me and I thought, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to start with many. <laughs> and, uh, I told some friends at the pub that night, it probably wasn't a good yardstick to use, but they were like, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, they all completely pissed, oh, yeah, great idea. So I went with it, and sort of stuck really. And uh, most of the professional work I do as an artist now is under the name of Fabric Penny. And uh, it's become a little bit of a persona that's uh, taken off without me being part of it really, which is quite interesting. And I got that idea of, uh, I figured if musicians can do it, why can't artists do it? You know, why can't they have something there? But it's fun, you know, I enjoy it. I enjoy the whole idea of, you know, people not doing who I am. And, uh, you know, people are in group and say, is that Fabric Penny? <laughs> You've got a whole other voice, you know, I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's just, you know, it's fun. And the one thing that really runs through all my work, the one thing that, uh, the main thing, which is the focus is, you know, I really enjoy making work, I really enjoy making art, and I feel it's a real privilege. And uh, it's fun, and I want to spread that fun, you know. And uh, on the face of it, my work might look quite superficial and uh, quirky and fun, but, you know, it's, I'm very serious about it. And, uh, and the stuff that I produce is really heartfelt. And uh, I've got a confession, I'm, a, I'm addicted to drawing, I can't stop doing it. Um, it's what I do all the time, you know, I'm kind of Instagram, and, um, I just did that about 30 seconds ago, I just can't, I can't stop doing it, you know, so I'm in this short film, which I've not got on here, um, which is called Can't Stop Drawing, Must Chop Off Hand. <laughs> And I'm, I'm, I'm not got that here, but I will post it online over the next week or so, and uh, you've got to look at it. But uh, sometimes it just feel like that. It's like I'm not doing it. Um, but that's again, that's one thing I find really interesting about drawing is that um, it's an exploration, and I don't really know why I do it, but I need to carry on drawing to try and find out why I do it. And uh, you know, so that's, that's the way it is. Really. That's the way it is. So the extension of uh, my sort of obsession with drawing comes out in the electronic and digital work that I do as well, and especially the work with handheld devices. And uh, probably about 18 months ago now, I started using the iPhone, and got really obsessed with using that. And it meant I could draw in even more places than I could with the sketchbook, so now I've even drawn in the shower on my iPhone, or on the toilet, you know, everywhere, just, you know, drawing, drawing on the damn thing. Um, and then I got hold of the iPad, and, uh, and now I can't really draw on my iPhone, I've almost forgotten how to use that, just, uh, it's like I've been trying to post a shout and then someone's given me a massive roll of paper. So it's, uh, you know, I just think the, uh, the iPad is just an amazing tool. And a lot of my work over the last three or four months has been solely using the, uh, the iPad, even though I do draw all the time as well. And I've started combining the two, two worlds together as well, the analog and the digital. I use a lot of digital photography in terms of textures within some of the work that I'll show you as well. Um, I didn't realise, but... Uh, looking back at what this web presence I've got, I've actually got quite a lot of stuff out there, and uh, I'm quite keen to keep not uh, marketing to my work, but I'm quite keen for my work to be seen. You know? I make it because I want it to engage with people, and if they hate it, that's fine, they're engaging with it. You know, um, the sort of work that I make, I want people to comment on, I want people to come back and you know react to it. And if they don't like it, they're still reacting, and that's fine. Um, I just want them to still tell a life outside of uh, me creating. Really. <laughs> okay, so this is. Uh, this is my latest website, which I've put together over the last couple of months, really. Um, and this, these images, anyone who's seen some of my work previous to this new batch of work, I used to use brushes quite extensively, um, and still do, but uh, this vector-based work that I've been working on recently is created using uh, Paintbook. I don't know if anyone uses Paintbook at all. Uh, yeah. Paintbook? Or Paintbook. Yeah, anybody used it? Anybody use it? Yeah. I used it. Yeah, it's a really nice app, and uh, I realised when I started using it that one thing that I do when I'm using digital technology, I, I sort of find uh, find something in the real world which I've done, which sort of works in a similar way. So the way I created these is almost like uh, I used to make collages with by cutting out paper, and the way that I, I work with paintbook, you know, I, I pretty much cut pieces out. And I think in my head when I'm making the things, I'm, I'm sort of imagining that I'm cutting things out, and very much you know putting shapes out and pasting shapes on top of each other. Um, so this piece is called Rabbit Juggler, and uh, I just thought it was quite a neat, neat image to have on the front page of my site. <laughs> and 
Um, I did tell you a couple of these at the same time, but I just figured it's just fun to have to click on these. Um, so this is uh, this is my latest website. Now I tend to be a bit obsessive about my website, so and these change quite a lot. But this is the latest uh, incarnation of, uh, of my website. Um, I'm winging this, like I said, I'm making it up to go along, so please, uh, if, you, if you want to walk out, which is terrible, that's fine as well. <laughs> uh, so, my work uh, really extends across different platforms. I do a lot of digital work, a lot of work with mobile devices, uh, a lot of traditional painting in terms of the, the approach to actually making the marks, work on canvas. I do a lot of work on uh, cardboard as well, or in like uh, how tactile cardboard is and how throwaway it is as well. Um, and a lot of the influences that I have within my work sort of uh, stem from popular culture, some sort of street culture street as well. And a lot of cartoon imagery in there as well. So uh, let's see what we've got here. Um, a lot of this stuff is based around uh, illustration ideas as well. And some of them has been published as, uh, as illustrations. Some of them are just uh, just little doodles and experiments really. And uh, a piece called Rabbits, which I uh, again created in paint book. And uh, more and more, I, I like exploring narrative within within the work as well. Uh, not in terms of formed, finished stories, but something that's suggested to the viewer, where people can sort of uh, you know imagine what's going on for themselves. And like I said, first and foremost, when I'm making things, I'm making stuff that I like and uh, you know I would like to look at, and, and hope that some people may have a I'm saying I'm just ahead of the child. It's a little bit of I'm just trying to think of the best way to do this. If I um I don't know what it's gonna be talking about the cardboard work, I think this has got quite a lot of parallels with the way that I work um, very quickly with the digital uh, within the digital world as well. Um, this is um, this was quite a breakthrough piece for me. Uh, and um, the studio space that I used to be based in. Um, part of my part of my sort of working life, I'm an artist. Half of it, I'm I also run a media production company as well, and uh, we do video and animation work, specialising in working with young people. So uh, the stuff that I'm really interested in doing when I work with young people is uh, giving them a voice to tell their stories you know, through animation, through digital art, and uh, looking at stuff which is high quality that people will want to watch. So I had this studio which uh, accommodated all my video editing equipment and downstairs I had a, a basement which wasn't used I converted that into a gallery space and uh, this is probably about two years ago I started uh, working more towards work which was akin to my training which is in fine art um, I had a bit of a, a limbo where I did a lot of animation work but then realised about probably three years ago now that uh, you know, I need to start painting again, really. But the drawing continued and that fed into the animation. And this was a real breakthrough piece on cardboard. This is probably about as big as one of these tables, but it's not a little bit bigger. And this is using, uh, I don't know if anyone's used Posca pens. Uh, no? Uni Posca? Posca. P O S C A. Uh, you've probably seen um, pubs in the UK sometimes have blackboards outside with uh, brightly coloured lettering on, same mm -hmm. what menus are. A lot of those are doing Posca pens. They're basically uh, acrylic pigment in a pen, in a marker pen. And they're, they're painting pens, they're just really fantastic to use. And they work really well on cardboard. And it uh, looks quite dull on here, but on the screen it's really quite vibrant. And the colours stay really fresh. And it dries very quickly, and it allows you to work very, very quickly over the top of uh, the thing you've just laid down. So in terms of um, working on this format, with acrylic paint, it's fantastic, it dries very, very, uh, very, very quick, quicker than normal acrylic, and it means I can work straight back into it. And the way that tends to work is, you know, almost like a friendly state, you know, I work very, very quickly, and, uh, you know, having things drying quickly is great, and that's why uh, working on the iPad is fantastic, because there's no drying time, I can try out things with colours and so on, very, very quickly. Um, there's also an obsession with pattern, as you can see within these works as well. Um, and I'll sometimes knock off a couple of these in an afternoon. Um, sometimes I'll maybe do four or five in an afternoon and only one of them sort of will survive and so I'll destroy it through the process. Which again is something I'm really interested in, the whole idea of wanting to destroy something in order to create something else. Um, which runs through the um, into the uh, electronic based work as well. This piece is called uh, does anyone know the book Sting of the Dump? What? Is there another one? <laughs> There's a book called Stig of the Dump. It's 
British book, it's a children's novel. No. It's about, um, you know about it. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> it's, about, um, it's about a character that lives in a, in a quarry, and um, no one really knows much about the character, and uh, he doesn't have language, so he's almost sort of caveman like, and he, he lives in this. Uh, is in this quarry. Anyway, I was telling you that because this is called Stigmata. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, you know, wordplay uh, tickles me, and I think it's a beautiful pathway. I like it as well. So, uh, and uh, someone bought this at the uh, exhibition opening because of the title. So I then thought, right, I'm going to actually get some really good titles because they're looking at the work. They just want the title. Um, so, yeah, that's Stigmata of the Dump. And this was a bit of a turning point in, in my work, really. And a lot of this imagery is carried over into the digital work that I create, you know, I do apologise for using Flickr, but it's, it's there. Um, these pieces are very small, these are um, discarded cardboard which I found in skips and things and sort of reclaimed. And uh, I started working on this character called Sorai, which uh, I had a sore eye for quite a long time. I took up with uh, a problem with my skin, I've got really bad allergies to with things like milk and uh, lots of things. I went for an allergy test recently, it was like a novel, you know, the, the printer. <laughs> yes, oh, God, stop that. Um, so, uh, I'm actually going to avoid a couple of things at the moment. But this character, Sora, I read in my head that if I carried on drawing it, that uh, the more I drew Sora, the better my eyes got. So, uh, it was almost like convincing myself that by, by drawing this stuff, I was like, uh, it was like saying, well, my obsession's okay as well. <laughs> so, the more I drew it, the more my eyes seemed to get better. So I just carried on drawing it. But then it, it sort of uh, came back and bit me in the arse. And I think that I just uh, drew it too much and my eyes got sore again. So I had to lay off for a little bit, you know. <laughs> so this, this character sort of, I um, was drawn in lots and lots of, uh, you know, different pieces which I create, created and still sort of create now. Um, and I suppose he's, he's a bit of a soft portrait, as are a lot of the characters within my work. I tend to use quite a lot of imagery based around fallen champions. I use the crown imagery quite a lot. Don't quite know where that comes from, but again, you know, I just keep doing it to try and work out why the hell I'm doing it. But that's the fascination with it, you know. And, uh, and when I draw, like I said, I don't always know what I'm going to draw, and it's, it's very much an exploration. And uh, you know, I get a real kick out of it, which is a good enough reason to keep doing it, I think. I like to uh, reuse things as well, which. Uh, <laughs> You know, which I, which I sort of buy or have used in the past, and <laughs> I worked on uh, worked on a big uh, UK-based video project with young people, and we had to send out loads of DVDs at the end of it. So we uh, we bought some cardboard packaging, but you had to buy them in the thousands, and there was only about 500 DVDs went out. So I ended up with about 1,500 of these boxes, and rather than just recycle them, um, I ended up working on them. And uh, I, I did probably about 500 of these um, on on cardboard DVD size uh, boxes. This is again, this is Posca pen. Posca pen. Uh, so you're on the right hand side. Of the right hand. Yeah, Posca. Yeah. Sorry, if my people don't seem to be getting my accent very well. So uh, do you ask me to repeat things? If uh, even what? <laughs> I was telling someone at, at lunchtime, uh, I think it was Chris actually, I got in a taxi yesterday and, and we were going to the, uh, the bar and I said, uh, I need to go to Broome. And she said, what? I need to go to Broome. And the children said, oh, Broome. I said, yeah, Broome. And, and I'm convinced. I'm saying, she's saying exactly what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, this is like Monty Python-esque. <laughs> Broome, Broome. You know, <laughs> We're going to start doing silly walks and things as well. <laughs> so this uh, this selection here, they're, they're all sort of small pieces of cardboard, and, uh, and I've got a bit of the thing about cardboard as well. And rather than throw it away, I'd rather do it on it and then throw it away. Um, but a lot of these things as well, I've drawn things and left them left them around and left them for people to find. And uh, some of them, I put a stick on the back saying, "If you find this, can you photograph it and email it to me?" Or uh, I'll do whatever you want with it. You know, destroy it and then photograph. Yeah, send it to me, you know, whatever, but I've had a few responses and, uh, you know, it's nice when people feel fine. I've had things photographed that's all been left in the rain and it's all bled as well. And, and someone sent me an email saying, why the hell do you want to photograph this? It's just a splodge. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's quite nice having that dialogue with people I don't know as well, you know, people yeah. just send me, send me things back. And I've done things where I've gone into bookshops and I've put things in books as well, so people bought them and then, <laughs> yeah, I found them. Yeah. What's this? 
and, uh, and again ask them to get in touch with me. Um, this is another incarnation of sore eye. Um, the nice thing about these posture patterns is it's very immediate. And, like I say, it dries very quickly, and uh, although it doesn't look like on there, uh, the colours are very vibrant. And uh, there's something quite charming about the quality of the pen as well. Yeah, they're not big, are they like wash? Are they opaque? Yeah, it's, it's really, uh, it is really thick stuff. Thick stuff. It's, yeah. Um, it's really nice because uh, with normal marker pens, you know, Sharpie or something, you put a dark green down and you try and put a red over it, you just won't have it, but with this, you can. Um, they're really great, great pens. I should be on commission, really, from them, because I always uh, pick them up to people, but I, I really love using them. No, do they pay much? No. Great. No, I did, I did some uh, collaborative work with uh, a guy called Velasco, a French guy, and he's been using them for about 20 years. And uh, as long as they're... I tend to, if I remember, I fix them with a, with a spray, and uh, you know, that's meant to keep them, keep them good for a long time. The image that you showed this morning of the pair, that was done with these as well. And that was just uh, sprayed and varnished to, uh, to preserve it. So some of these I can't remember doing, which is quite weird. <laughs> but this is quite an early one as well, and again, it's quite obsessive in terms of the pattern work. And this was an old shoebox. Um, I asked, um, I asked friends and family if they got anything shoebox size or bought new shoes to let me have these boxes. Now I've done quite a few exhibitions where um, whole walls have just been full of boxes, you know, so you've got different depths going on. You don't get the idea of it here, but obviously it's flat plain. But this is the, the top of quite a, quite a deep, I think it was a boot box actually, uh, a box uh, that had boots in it. Um, and it stood quite, quite proudly from the wall. And again, a lot of the images that I create, I quite like the anticipation of what's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like cats very much either, because I'm allergic to cats. You're allergic, yeah. So, <laughs> so I swung back at the cats from the <laughs> Article, I hate mushrooms as well, which I don't. My daughter hates mushrooms, but um, I think... Yeah, there's loads of mushrooms. Uh, this whole planet in the background is mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and this is all uh, bones of dead cats down here in this planet. <laughs> but I do appreciate lots of people really like cats. So. <laughs> and these are all done about a similar time. I had this skull thing going on as well, so a lot of patterns made out of skull. And I quite like the idea of making beautiful things out of things that people don't often think are beautiful. So, you know, making patterns of skulls is there's some sort of paradox in there. It's quite nice. I think we um, move on to a different section. Um, I worked with this uh, really interesting group of uh, young people um, on a film project and this one lad just used to say, my Jesus, all the time, he said, my Jesus. So I made this painting from it, it's called My Jesus. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's another box painting, I think it's a similar box to the, uh, actually my business partner used this for a, uh, an excuse to buy lots of shoes as well. <laughs> So she's come in and said, I'll just bought lots of shoes because you need the boxes, don't you? <laughs> so lots and lots of shoe boxes from there. Right, if I flick on something slightly different here. Um, I do a lot of collaborations with different artists as well. And one thing that I really like to do is, is, um, is collaborate and share my ideas and uh, spark my ideas off with uh, by, sorry, working with other artists. I've done work with musicians and dancers. Uh, other visual artists. A lot of the collaborations have been through Flickr. Uh, some of them have been live collaborations. I've got an ongoing collaboration with an Italian musician who's a friend of mine and uh, we've been doing quite a lot of live draw events where we just turn up somewhere. Um, he'll bring his guitar, I'll bring uh, well, well, the next thing I might try doing on the iPad but I'll use a Wacom tablet and my laptop with a projector and uh, I'll just start drawing and he'll start playing what my drawing looks like and I'll start drawing off the back of what his music sounds like and we get this really interesting di dialogue happening between the two art forms where there's some sort of synergy seems to come from nowhere because we don't really know what's going to happen until it happens um, and I've got an example of that, it's going to play back on here I do apologise for people to hear this stuff before
going for five hours, yeah. my hand was just huge. I didn't realise I was like completely into it. This is using the Sketchbook Pro on the on the Mac, which is really nice to use. You start with a black screen, and then everything you draw appears yeah. in the projector. So this is a, a dancer actually working in front of the in front of the light as well, and actually drawing over the top of her, and she was stacking boxes, which I was drawing on. And then she take the boxes away here, and then the, the colour of the boxes still there. It's a really nice process, which this doesn't capture as well as it actually being there. But what happened after about two hours of doing this, because this is like a dance floor as well, people started moving in front of the drawing and actually picking out shapes within the piece. Uh, and then I started drawing over there, but it just sort of, it was a really interactive uh, you know, sort of event, really, which is really nice. But what's quite freeing about this is um, I wasn't looking at a finished piece, I was just looking at making stuff that came out really and stuff that reacted to, to the music that was, being, that was being played. So that was very different to the way I normally work, which was, uh, which was quite nice. Um, I've done that probably in about four or five different locations. One of them was um, on the side of a warehouse. Uh, a friend's got a fan and a generator and we just pulled up outside this warehouse in the middle of the night and started doing this drawing on the side of it, which is really exciting. And we're now working on a piece based on that idea, um, but with a narrative. It's actually a performance piece which is going to be half an hour long. And it will have six sort of chapters, each chapter having a, a, um, a start and an end, which will stay the same. But each time to perform, the middle bit between the chapters will change. You know, just so each performance is, is organic. Um, so that's, that's just another, another thing that I've been playing around with. Are you doing toys? I see up there. Is that a... Oh yeah, I did. Um, I did a, an exhibition which was based around collaborations. The whole thing was based around collaborations, and uh, everything in the exhibition I collaborated with someone on. This is a guy uh, called Mike Burnett who makes. He's, he's uh, USA based. And he makes wooden toys and uh, as art pieces. I think he's got some here. And uh, he made this. He made this blank toy that he could buy. It was just, it was just a blank shape, nothing on it. Um, so I made a, a series of these. Uh, this one's called Monkey Skull. Again, based on the sort of Sora character. And they're, they're really nice. You can't get these anymore. But <clears throat> you'd buy one of these characters and it come in its own box. So uh, I presented a, a little painting on the front of each box, which these guys sort of lived in. Um, so yeah, I really like um, you know working on different different formats as well. And again, this is Posca pen, and you get more of an idea on, on these, the sort of vibrancy of the colour and the, the thickness of the pigment as well. You know, it's really really nice stuff to work with. And also, I made some of these dancing as well, which is a bit more. <laughs> what, what's the doll made of? It's, it's wood, wood, solid wood. Yeah, it's beach. I like how your characters cross over from the different. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's interesting. Seeing the images this morning, Julia, you used the three together, I didn't realise how strong the sort of imagery comes oh, through yeah. as being mine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I thought it was all different. I'm just going to say the thing over and over again. <laughs> well, I'm quite fortunate to have some... Um, I'm quite fortunate to have friends who are pretty crazy as well. And a friend of mine um, who was a guitarist, he, he bought this guitar and before he even played it or put the strings on it, he said, will you draw on it? I think it cost like £1,500 or something. And I was like, well, I can draw on it, but it might be terrible. And he said, oh, just draw on it. So uh, I had it in the studio for about two weeks and I was really quite scared about drawing on it. And uh, I'd done a test on the back and the Posca pens wouldn't work on it. It just wiped off. So I bought, bought some Sharpies and uh, this is just black Sharpie. And I did it all in a continuous line initially. Uh -huh. So I was, I was really, you know, I can't think of a better phrase, shit scared of, um, of doing it. So um, <laughs> I just went in one evening and thought, right, I'm just going to do it. And I just started, and I just started drawing like I do in this sort of obsessive way. Uh, and I just started at one end of the uh, of it and, uh, and just sort of drew with this continuous line, which just sort of kept going. And 
you know, before I knew it, I got to the end of the the big town. It was all covered, and I just had to add add different black areas into it. And uh, we put a lacquer on it, a very thin lacquer. And uh, you know, he really loved it, and it was just really nice to work on something like that. So, so since this was completed, uh, I've now got a violin which someone gave me to to work on, and a double bass, which I'm really excited about working on. Know. So. Uh, they're just really simple um, plywood instruments, which I'm just going to rub down and then work on, probably with Posca pen underneath, then work over with Sharpie, you know, like this. What is a Sharpie? It's one of these. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Sharpie? You don't call them Sharpies? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's <laughs> not <by> yours. <laughs> I've got a, like a business partner, Yvonne. She uh, she got really excited one day and she came back with these oversized sharpies and uh, they're probably about that big. And she was like, wow, he's going to love these. And I took the top off and it smelled like fish. Yes. And, I was like, and then I looked at it and it had the same text on and I looked closely and it said, shoot. And it was like a, it was a Chinese called <laughs> Sharpie. Oh, and they didn't even write. They actually oh, melted the paper or something. It really nasty stuff. It smelled <laughs> And I was like, this is a shooting. It was like, it was really good to me. So I was like, wow, Sharpie heaven. Shoopy <laughs> hell, you know, it's really Sorry, I just keep thinking of these little things. This, I got, uh, I got commissioned about six months ago now, or maybe a little bit less, five months ago, to create some work for a museum in, in South Yorkshire. It's an old Victorian music museum called the <laughs> Cannon Hall, and they've got uh, two collections that they wanted artists to work from, using the, the collections as a starting point. One of the collections is a collection of ancient pear trees, which they have in a Victorian walled garden, which is a really beautiful place. Um, so I thought, you know, working outside from that would be really exciting. And they also had a collection of uh, Staffordshire pottery, uh, ranging in about 150 years. And a lot of it had really vibrant colours. Um, and I thought, well, I'll just put an application in and see what happens. And I went to the interview and I just said to them, look, my work is pretty crazy. I'm sure you want it in your museum. You know, you've got all these costumes and things and stuffed animals and... And they were like, yeah, we want crazy, so uh, we gave him this space and uh, I pretty much filled it with, uh, with stuff which I made as part of the commission. And these pairs, I had them turned by um, a wood turner in Leeds who I found on the internet who makes very small pairs. And, and uh, these are about a foot and a half tall, you know, they're quite they're about that sort of size. And he was a really interesting guy, he was really up for doing new things, things he'd not done before. Um, so he wouldn't make anything, he wouldn't make two, two of these pairs the same, I thought in different sizes. He only ever did things that were slightly different to what he'd done before. So I did uh, two of these which are now in display cabinets next to pottery which is like worth thousands of pounds and there's my wooden pair. <laughs> and also um, some of these vinyl characters as well which, um, which I painted up. And uh, each of these colours that I used um, on all these works are sampled from the pottery, so uh, you know, these are actually sourced within, within the pottery that uh, I was working from. This piece is called uh, Little Walter, I think. Yes, yeah, called Little Walter. The two, uh, the collection of potteries, these two brothers called Moorcroft, Moorcroft Pottery, and one of them is called, it's called William, one of them is called Walter. So uh, I made Little Walter and a Little <laughs> William. And, uh, and Little William is a centaur, he's got like a horse's body. I don't think I've got a picture of him. So I wanted to mention that because um, I was going to show you a print that I made as uh, part of the same series. So this is the pear tree print. Um, and this was, um, some of this started life in a sketchbook like this. Uh, I don't think I've actually got the one in here, but you know, these are a sort of quite a good representation of the sort of stuff that I'm making with marker pen. And this started off as, I think, four of these, four images, um, you know, similar size mm -hmm. to these, uh, which I then photographed using an SLR camera, took into Photoshop and hand-coloured it uh, using a Wacom tablet. And this print is probably, probably about as big as this whiteboard. Mm -hmm. um, and parts of this were painted on the iPhone as well. So these feet here. Huh. These were like uh, 
umbrella stands made out of big feet. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know why they do those, but so these these two were painted on the iPhone. Um, and these uh, piggybacking angels here, they were painted on the iPhone. Oh. And I think there's other bits within there, so uh, I combined lots of different things. And each of these characters has got a, a texture which is taken from a photograph of some of the pear tree bark. So they've got all textures on them as well. Um, it's quite a, a rich piece when you see it in the flesh. Um, building with lots and lots of layers. And uh, my MacBook started shaking and smoking when I was making this because it had so many layers and kept on point. I've got over 100 layers and it's, you know, it's a huge file. Um, but this is, this is uh, actually uh, up on the wall of the museum next to some huge oil paintings. So again, it's uh, got some sort of... Uh, Amazing. There's some sort of quite perverse about that as well, but in this stuff next to uh, the traditional oil painting. But it works really well in the space, I'm really pleased with how it looks, uh, which is good. And I keep seeing things which I forgot about I did. I'm not even sure that any of this is mine actually. I've been hacked. This is another collaborative uh, set of work that I worked on as well with, uh, with a photographer, a friend of mine, who does quite a lot of film stills for film work that I do, so he comes in and takes production photographs and so on. And uh, we have this idea of actually creating familiars or uh, characters which could belong to, to human characters. So it's almost like making alter egos. Um, so we photographed a lot of friends and lots of colleagues uh, hugging blankets and hugging pillows and things. So this was a photograph of my friend Lou, who was a painter, um, hugging a pillow. <laughs> and uh, then I just painted over the pillow and put a character in. And we did lots of experiments with this and, uh, and found that like a plumped up pillow worked pretty really well and made the sort of pose of the, uh, the main character really convincing. <laughs> so I think the series is about maybe, um, I think they've done about 12 of those so far. And that's like an ongoing, ongoing series, which I think I've got another example here as well. <laughs> but I take my work to quite traditional framers, this guy um, who makes these amazing frames and uh, each time I take my work in he's just like, oh here we go again, what's, what's this one? <laughs> but, you know, he's great, he's great with it, but uh, you can see lies going to the back of his head. <laughs> what the hell's he doing now? What kind of frame would you put with something like this? Would it be a gourmet frame? No, I've, um, I'm quite handle about the uh, frames that I get. I always get the same stuff. It's just like a big chunky wooden black frame that really play it. Because I think it works so busy and so much happening in it um, that it needs space to breathe through. Um, and plus, in the past, I've, uh, I've shot myself in the foot by having big exhibitions where I've pulled on work that's gone out to different places and it comes back and it always with people people do. It's all framed in different ways. So, in a moment of uh, enlightenment, I now do everything with the same frame, which just makes it a lot easier when I'm going to uh, go to order this stuff as well. Uh, if I'm going on too much here, please. What, what, um, what would you say your artistic inspirations were? The artists that you, as a kid growing up, you admired? Uh, I think my favourite artist of all time is probably Flip Gustin. Um, no, <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. And actually, it's funny. You I mentioned that, you asked me that question, because these, these two here, I realise they've got a bit of a Gustin-esque palette to them, uh, you know, from his, uh, from his later work, just the, the limited palette of the pinks and greys and so on. Um, but yeah, Philip Gustin I really like. I'm a big fan of Picasso. Um, I like a lot of comic book artists. I like a lot of cartoon-based work. Um, I like Basquiat. You know, I like a lot of street art. I, I hate a lot of street art as well, but I like a lot of them. What was that? Yeah. Yeah. I also see kind of Australian Aboriginal kind of images coming through. Yeah, people have said that before. That isn't something yeah. that consciously I do, but I, I think the obsession with pattern maybe yeah, has, uh, so. yeah. has something there. Have you done any street art? Um, yeah, I have. I've done, I've done bits, yeah. Uh, and I've done, I've, I tend to put up stickers and things quite a lot, and uh, I don't know if I mentioned before you came in, I do quite a lot of stuff where I make stuff from cardboard and just leave it around. So rather than actually fixing it to a wall, I just I'll sort of display it somewhere and uh, and ask people put a sticker on the back asking someone to photograph it and email it back to me and uh, now it's been quite successful. Um, but I've done quite a lot of stuff with stickers and um, and 
and refocusing them as they age, you know, in situ, which I find quite, quite interesting as well. And Do you sell prints? Pardon? Do you sell prints of like... Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of the work that I've done more recently have, have been re reproduced as uh, z player prints. Um, that that big print that I showed you before was in the museum. That's uh, that's a z player print. Oh. Um, and these are these are quite recent pieces, um, which have been actually these are crops because these were created for this postcard series that I did. Um, but I've used quite a lot of. Uh, Wrestling figures out, I know this as well, which I didn't sort of realise it, but um, this is all using paint book as well, using sort of flat vector based uh, imagery. Uh, this character here, this ballerina, is based on my daughter. I think this is a bit of a self portrait going on here. This is called, uh, it's called Ballerina, Wrestler, and Rabbits. Um, this was called I Mean Bits. <laughs> And what I like about um, new apps is that um, they tend to offer up new ways of working to me. Yeah, you know, I didn't really work like this until I um, I got hold of the paintbook and it just suggested a way of working which worked for me, which had this very much a cut-out style. And now I use paintbook and brushes. Um, they're the two apps that I use the most, really. And I work in a certain way in brushes and I work in a certain way um, in paintbook. In the same way, if I use pen and ink, I'll work in one way and the imagery will be different if I'm using all the pastel. Um, so I like that in, in the apps. Oh, this one's face is crawling, so I had a really itchy <laughs> face one day. And uh, I can collect photographs of textures of old barn doors, and uh, I actually make textured paintings um, just as source material for four textures. So this is a, a paint spattered image which uh, I created, and then that's overlaid in Photoshop over the top of one of the. Uh, the paintbook paintings. So some of them, I, I, I think, just look a bit too um, too processed and flat. And sometimes I can't live with them and be too flat. So I'll, yeah. I'll have a look at one of my library textures and then bang that over the top. Um, this is a, a piece that was made using Sculptmaster huh. and um, and brushes. So you know, now and again I do play around with different apps, but I always find myself going back to brushes and uh, and more recently paint. This one is uh, wasabi and uh, brushes. <laughs> yeah, it's got very sore eye. Right? His eye was sore, and then he got punched in it. It's not sore. <laughs> really sore eye. Right? Oh my. Yeah, he's in a bit of a way as well. <laughs> See, some of this look like it's terrible, I really like it. This would be I really like. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, this one here, uh, this was a brushes painting, but I got really obsessed about making drips, you know, look like drips. Uh -huh. yeah, but, you know, getting it was painted really quickly. Did you paint the drips by hand? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Now, this was a piece that was in the Healing Touch exhibition that we uh, yeah, put together. Yeah. And I was really struggling with this, uh, and I worked through lots and lots of different images and I didn't, find, didn't quite find the right one. And then this one just sort of spilled out on me late one night and uh, just seemed to work. You know, very quickly, maybe 15 minutes with the painting, and it just, it just worked for me, and uh, apparently it was received really well, so that so was good. And when I first got the iPad, um, just talking about making me sort of work different, you know, I made these two pieces, which were very different to the, the work that I'd made before. And, for some reason, I was wanting to make something that's quite cinematic and actually existed in space a lot more than the flat work that I, I've sort of shown so far. And uh, some, for some reason, wrestlers clutching chickens and three-legged tripod wrestlers with cats on their heads. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm quite fond of these pieces, even though I've not really made any others like them since. So is that the same one. Did, did you go directly from sort of um, analog to um, to the iPod and to the iPhone, or did you have a Photoshop well, iPod yeah. experience? Yeah, right yeah, there? using a Wacom. Uh, you did use yeah. the Wacom right there. Yeah, so uh, see this one. This has got a real, real history, and this was probably made over about a 
week, it's probably one of the longest I've spent on making making a piece. And there's actually, I'm really upset that you can't see anything actually. Right. But this guy here, <laughs> he's got an Elvis jumpsuit on and a big quiff, but you can't see anything. Can Well, an earlier incarnation. There we go. This is serious. Yeah, so some of these pieces, I do tend to have a bit of a narrative going on. And I really like the idea of this guy getting getting punched and the guy in the jumpsuit saying, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just uh, once I've done something, you know, I was quite happy with that. And then I found myself moving back to uh, you know, a familiar way of working with it. And I've tried out a few different apps. You know, this one, I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's just one of the uh, you know, very simple drawing apps. I can't remember what it's called. Live sketch, yeah. It might be live sketch, yeah. Um, and uh, you've probably noticed within my work, I quite like using negative shapes. So I'll draw one shape, which then suggests another one, and then suggests another one, so you get like a jigsaw uh, appearing. So these two figures suggest this bird in the middle. Can you see that bird image? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's like a cheeping bird. Two, two figures right. either side, and again the king thing, which I just can't, can't get rid of that. What's going on there? It seems, uh, You're no. British. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know much about that. Kind of oh, thing. <laughs> I think it's actually, uh, I think this might give you a bit of insight to it. Uh, I don't know if in the 70s you got a program, a uh, Chinese program called Monkey, which was uh, based on the great sage, the monkey god. Um, See how crown as well, I think it's probably more to do with that than a real king. It's like a uh, kung fu series, huh. and this is a piece that I did call Monkey King, which was based on my experience of watching that as a kid and thinking I'd grow up and find a cloud like monkey. Um, what am I doing for time? Um, oh, also, to do uh, as part of this, this commission that I've talked about uh -huh. quite a lot, I got some of these. Uh, these trainers printed as well with the, the, the pear tree print yeah. on them and uh, a lot of the tapestries within this museum space have got like uh, brass railings or uh, hanging devices like tubes mm -hmm. that things are hung over and I threw a pair of these over <laughs> <laughs> which you know again they, they really liked in the museum I kept thinking what can I do to piss these people off and everything I did I just thought it was great so I failed I thought, surely you're not going to let me have some trainers hanging up there. Yeah, throw them all up. And uh, I also, uh, another collaboration with Chandra, it's part of uh, the same installation. Um, Someone that I met on Flickr, actually, and uh, I sent her some images from from the Petri print, highlighting the ones I wanted her to make, and she made these characters and sent them back. And these are actually um, displayed opposite that big print. I forgot the major part, which I should have mentioned actually. There's also um, the central part of that print, which I showed you. Uh, there's a big red pear tree in the centre here. Um, my wife's a textile artist, and uh, my wife and daughter created this um, 12 foot high uh, felt tree with a trunk about that thick, based on this. Um, with all these bits of blue fabric sewn to it, and the characters which were made, which I just showed you on the Flickr account, sort of populated within the tree. So it's, uh, it's a very quirky, uh, quirky space, but I was really pleased with how it worked out. Wow. And they really embraced the idea of displaying some of the plastic characters which are painted and the wooden characters alongside some of the uh, antiquities of the pottery and so on. So you walk in and you think you're going to look at some old pottery, and there's like a huge pair with lots of crazy animals and things in it, which I really quite like. Um, has anyone got any questions while I try and think of something else to do? So what's your uh, email? What's just uh, fabric, your website? Um, Fabriclenny.co.uk okay. okay. And uh, you know, it spins off to lots of different different links and things, and I've got this... Uh, well, this is one of the first paper pieces I did. This is my... Uh, Hire an illustrator page, which has got more sort of illustrative work on it. It's one of which you can recognise from what I've shown. Yeah, these were a couple 
people were a bit worried when they saw these pictures actually. <laughs> <laughs> that one, uh, again, this is shows the interlocking nature of some of the work. Oh, this is called You Buy the Red Shoes, What Do You Expect? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know what to expect. Oh, this is called Rescue the Animals and Hide. And some overweight bald wrestler in fishnets. We <laughs> can't worry about ourselves sometimes. Um, and again, this is Posca pens on waterproof paper, along with Sharpie as well. I really like using non-art materials to make artwork as well, you know, actually using materials which might be shunned by some people. Um, I made this series following the scene of the Castle Exhibition at the National Gallery in London. Um, did lots of explorations based around these sort of castle-esque heads and the shapes that they suggest in negative. Um, some called Balancing Act, uh, again using different textures which have been captured photographically. Uh, I also have a couple of house rabbits that live with me as well, so I saw these worried. rabbits keep appearing. <laughs> and these are, some of these are purely digital paintings that you just created within Photoshop. Um, and this, this uh, image of the blue dog, it's a, a dog that I photographed my daughter playing with on the beach in Wales, and it's just quite nice to me, which I've sort of repeatedly used. Um, I think we've probably gone on at you long enough, really. Yeah. Has anyone got any questions or comments? Or? Thank you. Love you. Yeah. 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 And that's it, watch this. I just clicked on it and said, that's what we're doing. If anyone wants a postcard, it's all welcome to uh, yeah. go on the details on it. These are random. Come on, I want to answer to anything. There you go. Oh, that's, that's one of the best things. Do I get a postcard? Thank you. Thank you.